Hey everybody, uh, so in one of my recent videos, uh, somebody left a comment asking if it's possible to uh, create iOS apps with Ionic uh, just using a Windows computer or just not using a Mac in general. And so I wanted to create a bit of a video about that um, because it is a bit of an interesting topic. It's something that's come up uh, a lot in the past and something I've, I think I've written about uh, a couple times before. And so what it ultimately boils down to is yes, um, it is possible to do. Uh, there are a lot of caveats though, uh, and in general, generally speaking, you do need a Mac, uh, but you can work around that. And the reason I say that in general, you do need a Mac to create an iOS app, whether that's with Ionic or you know, any other sort of method, is that ultimately, if you want to create a native iOS app uh, that you can you know, submit to the App Store, then you need to use the iOS SDK and you can only use that uh, on a Mac computer with Xcode. Uh, so in that sense, you do need a Mac to create an iOS app, but there are ways you can work around it. And so I want this video to be, uh, or in this video, I just wanna talk about what some of those methods are. I, I'm not gonna cover every single possible way you could do it. Uh, there's probably some things I don't know about, uh, but I'm gonna cover the sort of the basic things that you know, most people could easily do. And so before I get into the various options, uh, one thing to consider is if you can build your application as a progressive web app instead of uh, a native iOS app. You know, depending on your requirements, you might not be able to do that. You might need native functionality. Uh, but if you can get around it or if you can you know, convince your, your boss or your client or whoever that uh, you, know, you can achieve what you need with a progressive web app that's hosted on the web, uh, you avoid the whole problem completely because you don't need to build a native app. Uh, but of course, sometimes you do need to build a native app. Uh, sometimes you know, your client or your boss or whoever just wants you to do it a certain way. So uh, we're gonna cover three different ways that you can possibly still build iOS apps even if you don't have a Mac. Uh, so the first and probably the best option, I think, is to use an Ionic package, uh, which is part of Ionic's uh, pro services or using something like PhoneGap Build. Uh, so this is actually what I used when I first started building uh, mobile apps. I was actually using Censure Touch at the time, but I later moved to Ionic. And basically I did all of my development work on a Windows uh, laptop and I used PhoneGap Build to create iOS apps. And so the idea with Ionic Package and with PhoneGap Build, uh, there's probably similar technologies out there as well. Basically you just upload the web content that you're building into the app. Uh, you upload that to uh, somebody else's servers, so uploading it to Ionic servers or to PhoneGap servers, and they handle the build process for you. And so they have the software, the SDK is required to actually build the native apps. So all you need to do is send the web-based uh, application, which you can build on any computer, and then they'll build that into the native app for you. So that just completely circumvents the need to have a Mac. You don't need that software uh, on your computer. Uh, so this is a it's a good method because you can sort of maintain a pretty good workflow. Um, it is you know, still harder than not having the uh, actual iOS SDK yourself to make builds yourself on your computer. Uh, but you do have a reasonably nice workflow and it is something that's manageable. Uh, the second option uh, to consider is just basically whether you can borrow uh, a Mac from a friend or a, a co-worker or perhaps you know, maybe you have a good library or something or a you know, school, university that provides you access to a Mac, uh, you can do most of the development of an application you know, purely on a Windows machine. And then the only thing you really need the uh, Mac for and the iOS SDK is the actual build and submission steps. So technically you could do just most of your development on your machine and then you just need to find a way somehow to get access to a Mac for maybe, you know, if you get the whole process worked out, maybe you only need like 10 or 20 minutes on a Mac. Uh, in order to perform that build step and submit it. I don't think this is a particularly good approach. I don't think it's really something that's uh, workable in a professional environment if you're building you know, apps for um, clients or things like that. Uh, it's not uh, it's not the best option because it, you know it is a bit of a hassle to you know go and borrow someone's computer or move your project over there. So you don't really have a good workflow. Uh, it's going to be hard to test things uh, as you're developing, but. Uh, if you are just you know, developing an app for fun or to learn, uh, or maybe it's just this once-off thing you're doing, then uh, this certainly can be an option. And so again, you can spend, you know, if you're developing an application for 100 hours, you could do all of that development on a Windows machine, and then the only time you actually need 
the Mac is when you're building and submitting it. Uh, so that could be an option too. And the third option I wanted to cover was using a virtual Mac. And this is actually uh, something that I've used in the past as well. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the submission process is for Ionic Package, but even when I was using PhoneGap Build, uh, I could get the builds, uh, the built native apps for iOS and Android. Uh, but to submit that app to the App Store, the Apple App Store, you still need to use a Mac to actually submit the built file, uh, which always seemed really silly to me, but you know, that's the process. So even if you had the built file, you still needed a Mac. Uh, and so that's where I started using a virtual Mac through a service called macincloud.com. Uh, so I'm in no way affiliated with macincloud.com. This isn't an ad for them or anything like that, but uh, it was a service I used uh, in the past and it worked. Um, the basic idea is that you buy like what well, the time I did it anyway, it was a few years ago now, but I would pay for credits uh, with them and then you get you know, a certain amount of time to use a Mac remotely. So they have the uh, machine set up on their end and then you just log in uh, through your own computer and use a, a virtual Mac. And so this was a reasonably workable uh, solution. Uh, I'd basically just used it to submit apps. Uh, it was for me at least, I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that I'm in Australia, but it was a pretty slow at the time when I used it. Uh, it was really, you know, really painful process to you know, log on and click around. Uh, everything took a lot longer than it should probably. But again, I only needed it for like 10 or 20 minutes to actually submit the app. So uh, again, it, it works if you need to do that. Uh, there's probably other services around as well. That just happens to be the one that I found and used. Uh, so I'd say in general, it is difficult to build iOS apps without a Mac. And if you can afford it, uh, it's definitely worth, you know, even if you get a low end Mac, uh, just to do the you know, build and submission steps, uh, it's definitely worth it. It saves you a lot of uh, time and effort, but uh, at least if that isn't an option for you, if you absolutely can't get a Mac, then there are still options available and you can certainly still build uh, iOS apps uh, without a Mac. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I hope this was able to clarify things a little bit for the people who are confused about uh, whether or not this was possible. Uh, if you do have a method that you use to build iOS apps without a Mac or you just know of any other methods, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I'm sure you know, there's lots of people who could benefit from that also. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.